So the predicament we have is a solid 12 hours of rain, easily over 100 mil fallen. This is one of the crossings we need to get across in order to get to the track which leads us out of here. So it's 7 o'clock in the morning, um, we're toying up whether to leave the Jayco in here and just make a run for it ourselves. But obviously the first port of call is to make sure we can get through this crossing. So that first crossing was doable, it was deep, but the truck got through so the Jayco should. But this next one, I'm not too sure, it's longer than I remember so I'm just going to have to do a bit of a walk. Uh, but then there's a bypass track where you're not allowed to take trailers on, so we can at the moment still get out if we leave the Jayco in here. It's got a fair flow to it and it's already up around my waist and I'm only a third of the way through. So, decisions to make. Two days later, makeshift shelter over the fire and the Jayco, which we hitched up two hours after you saw me drive that creek crossing. So as you can see, it's a good three or four metres higher, that crossing and the rapids are uh, considerably strong. But the good news is there's some fellas over on the other side of the creek that have just arrived for some adventure, young blokes, like we probably would have been. And um, so we have some communication now and somebody on the other side of this river. So just heading down to the river, it's probably the first morning we've had where we haven't had rain. So this marker just here, where my boot is, was where the water was up to after the main flood. So it's gone down, you'd have to call that at least a metre and a half. It's gone down a lot more in length, but as far as the depth in the middle. Um, we can nearly now see where we didn't cross from, which is the pebbles just here in front of us. It's still running quite quickly, but I'd say another day and um, I potentially could get on the paddleboard and, and run the winch cable across. So uh, hopefully no rain for now. So day four or five now. The rain stopped for, for a little bit so we've been collecting water. So we're going to spend the day boiling it up for drinking. Uh, I reckon we've got a couple more days here. Not a bad spot to be caught up though. So this is, uh, this is the first real day where we've had some sun and no rain. We can rely now on some power, some solar power for the van. Um, and um, after floods come the flies and the mosquitoes and so we just rigged up a bit of a shelter where we can at least sit for the day. And, um, and we're just going to wait it out. Keep the fire up. Keep the water up. And um, just wait for this creek to to, uh, to be you know a meter before we decide to do or whatever decide our next step. <gasps> Has he got it? Yeah. yeah, he's got it. You want to pull it in? Yep. Yeah, he, he's, he's oh, 
But yeah, look how far it's fucking up on me, mate, on the side of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's going to push you right out. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, it's an old side. Yeah. <laughs> I think it rolls you all my face, right? So that got slightly. So the depth's not a problem. <laughs> it's just the current. The flow is just amazing. Head down and check out the depth. I think we're a day away from crossing though. It's going down. Still need to be able to see the road on the other side because it does a left hand twist. We'll check the depth soon. So with 15 families trapped in this uh, floods over the th over three separate camps camp areas, we've got the Westpac helicopter now coming in with supplies from the SES for all the families. This is their third drop. So further down the valley, there were two other drops, and we've got um, the, la the landing area is going to be here. Kids are loving it. No crossing today, so another night here in Bendethra. Dinner over the fire, and we'll assess it again tomorrow.
We're already planning next year's trip. Beautiful country.